Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's September 3rd, our regular Tuesday Board of County Commissioners work session, and it's 4.30, uh, but we haven't just gotten started. We actually had a, a very good uh, meeting with our fellow commissioners at Lake County over in Twin Lakes uh, this morning, had lunch with them, had a very uh, good conversation with them on, on several issues of concern, and then we went into an exec session, and now we're on to our memos of interest. Thank you, George. The uh, first memo of interest is a budget supplemental request um, for $50,000. Uh, it is to support um, a, a, a partnership that really uh, helped bring Delta Airlines to our community. Uh, the, the funding is uh, part of a, a package as put together uh, by various uh, various entities in the, the community, uh, including the, the city of Aspen and uh, Snowmass Village. Uh, you, you may have seen in the paper that the city of Aspen had committed uh, $75,000 out of its general fund towards this effort, uh, and that ACRID put forward $75,000 in, in marketing funds that were derived from uh, the, the city's marketing sales tax. I know uh, Snowmass Village is still in the process of, of their approvals. Um, I believe they're at a similar level um, to, to the city of Aspen. Um, we tend to provide more ongoing support in terms of uh, the, the studies and, and staffing to um, both uh, seek out these types of opportunities to, to recruit airlines. Uh, to our community, our, our portion of this right now is uh, $50,000 of this package to support uh, marketing and some of the uh, initial steps that the airline will be taking to promote their new air service to Aspen. Uh, that air service will uh, be starting December 21st. Um, we actually have flights, and Jim can help me fill in the details here, but we have uh, flights that will be coming both from Atlanta and Minneapolis, and now I can't remember the schedule. Um, Daily from Atlanta, weekend, uh, Saturday from Minneapolis. We had had an opportunity to discuss the, the possibility of us participating in, in a package in an earlier executive session when we were uh, negotiating uh, with Delta. We're here today um, with our, our final ask to complete that package, uh, which is $50,000. It is from the general fund. Uh, the airport funds cannot be used to um, uh, support the, the marketing efforts. Uh, the, the total package is really pretty similar to what was put together for American Airlines, but in that case, uh, we provided more infrastructure pieces at the airport um, that, that we were able to use as an incentive. Uh, those weren't needed for this package. Okay, questions for Jim? No. Any comments? Do we get a Delta airplane over here to go with our American airplane? There's one uh, en route. <laughs> That's all I need to know. It's having trouble taking off. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to support this. I, I think uh, just in the uh, spirit of cooperation with our other partners, City of Aspen, Town of Snowmass Village, Acra, Ski Company, I think it does, uh, it is a good partnership. Uh, it's interesting to note, though, however, that Town of Snowmass Village, City of Aspen and ACRA, of course, they all have dedicated marketing dollars, uh, whereas Pickens County does not have any dedicated marketing dollars. We're taking out of our general fund. And so I'm a little, I just want to be a little cautious as we go down uh, this road in terms of future opportunities uh, that we're able to uh, address those issues. Uh, but I think it is important that we participate and partner at a at a certain level. And it's our airport general fund as no. opposed to our general no, fund? No, no, this is our, our uh, general fund. Yeah. So this would be, uh, in, in this case, uh, tax dollars. Um, you know, and, and George, I, I think it's great that you, you brought that up because we are trying to meet collectively to be more proactive in, in how these deals might be put together and who, who and how 
um, we participate in the future through an air services development council. It's very loosely formed, but for exactly those reasons, some fo some entities have dedicated funding, some entities have ongoing uh, support that that goes into this, and yeah, we'll we'll need to sort that out. Um, in this case, though, this does look. At, there's one piece you've given me an opportunity to throw in too, which is. Yeah, the estimated economic impact at standard load load capacities and such to our community of bringing these flights in is, you know, just under eight million dollars. Yeah, and once we translate that into the county sales tax, that would mean roughly sixty-seven thousand dollars. So we're pretty low risk in terms of the the net benefit. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, these are direct flights to Minneapolis and Atlanta. Correct. That's right. Uh, and do they share their uh, ticket counter space? Do they share that with one of the other airlines, or how does that work? We originally expected that uh, that they would share with SkyWest Airlines, who also flies for United at the airport. Um, as it turns out, Delta has elected to lease additional space at the airport, including ticket counter and gate space. So we'll see um, some additional activity there at the ticket counter in particular. Okay. Well, I, th I think it's terrific to get Delta back at, back at the airport and um, look forward to s seeing how this works. Maybe they'll do, be able to do a long-term commitment. I think it's important to note that when we met with Delta, they felt like it was uh, a good opportunity. They wanted um, some help re-entering the market in this marketing type funds that we just mentioned here. But I think they felt like um, they're very optimistic about where this could take us. So uh, I think that speaks positive to the community. Rob? I thought of an interesting question. Do, does Delta have a cooperative agreement with United and American if a, if a plane goes down? and their passengers need to get out on another airline to, to make their destination or their travel plans as smooth as possible? Because I know some airlines have part, uh, cooperation agreements and some don't. Yeah, the cooperation agreements occur. Um, I can't tell you exactly how they'll operate this particular station and how they'll move passengers, but in the past, the airlines have made accommodations where space is available and move somebody on to another airline to, to get where they need to be. Um, I'm always a little cautious because the, once you say that, it makes it sound like it'll happen each time for every customer. And, and I think it'll be a little bit on case and space available because, for example, if, if they moved from uh, headed toward Atlanta and they were able to go over Houston and get to Atlanta and, and United had space, I'm sure they'll try to do that. However, if they're trying to get to Amsterdam or some other place well beyond, it, it, you know, every step and leg adds some complication to, to make that work. And I guess the challenge is just that this is one plane in and out um, from Atlanta every day and then one plane once a week from um, Minneapolis, so it's challenging if that plane does have a mechanical issue or, uh, or it does actually go down for a day or something. But it's no different than the American uh, non non-stops. It's the same situation and even some of the United non-stops, so it's just the nature of the game. Well, I think, I think it should be viewed as a first step. I mean, I, I think with this we have three major international carriers with, you know, tremendous domestic networks. And so if these flights prove to be successful, and every indication is that they should be, um, that's when we start to get the more additional frequency, and that's how we've gotten to where United is today, is by incremental increases in, in capacity and frequency. So uh, I do have a couple of stats if you want to keep your discussion going, but I, you might like to hear a couple of details yeah. coming. Yeah, we actually, uh, just so the board knows, P&C is in here at 5 o'clock, so we're under a tight timeline today. Okay. So is everyone know, comfortable with this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, thank you. Okay, our second MOI is also a uh, budget supplemental request. This is uh, for uh, the costs associated with a future air service planning study. This is a study that we had an opportunity to discuss with the board um, uh, 
gosh, it's almost a month ago now, and uh, we, we've scoped it out and, and worked out the costs, and these are the additional costs um, outlined in the memo to uh, conduct the study, and I turn it over to Jim for further details. You may recall we got together and we talked about how to scope this out and really look at what challenges and issues we might look at as a community for air service moving forward. And um, from that, we had kind of talked in three different phases at the last time we were together. Um, as we went to put actually financial monies behind each of those layers and phases of scope, what became clear to us is that we were trying very hard to forecast a, a fairly significant number of unknowns. And so the, we really felt it was best to come to you with phase one, which is um, to focus on the changes in technology and development that might be coming in aircraft design and equipment and, and such. And, and that would help clarify the second and third phases because when we looked at it from this side of the fence, there was just this huge spectrum of subjects that we might have to go down different paths and it was almost impossible to forecast phase two from that. So I apologize by not bringing you the whole package but we just really felt it was prudent to work on phase one. Phase one is also very comprehensive and if we've learned the one thing over the years is that our community expects a very high level of detail even on the unknowns um, side of things and so that's what this is focused on. We're going to really get after where the the aircraft design, wing design are headed and to best consider where we might want to be as a community over time. So. This uh, uh, budget MOI is for 265000 and change, um, and it'll come back to you. Our target is to have this back to you in uh, around Thanksgiving. It is a time and materials-based contract, so we, uh, we have probably more time and energy into this in terms of dollars than hopefully it'll turn out to be, but it was more straightforward to, to try to pick as many moving parts as we could, identify them, put them in the scope, and bring it to you this way. Questions, Rachel? Uh, thank you for that. What I'm wondering is, as a standalone phase, will this have value if we don't go forward to another phase? And by doing this phase, are we going later here? Well, you really need to phase fund phase two, otherwise phase one's not going to be very valuable. I mean, are we in for, is there a much bigger chunk out there that we're already kind of um, committing to by default? I, I think what's b the beauty of the way that this has been designed is the board has a place to stop. So if you get the information that comes back to you in phase one and you ha will have a choice at that point to say yes we think we want to go forward with a better understanding of what infrastructure might be needed at the airport to support that. That's really what the core of phase two was. Or the board can say, thank you, that gave us a glimpse into the future, but we're cool where we are at the moment. We're going to stand down. So it's really a stepped process, and you can go as far as the board wants to take this. This just happens to be phase one, and you'll have a choice to, to uh, go forward with a future phase if the board decides to do that. Thank you. Steve? Uh, is this... Um, being done by JVation or a combination of different different uh, partners in this, or how does that work? Um, JVation is prime. As you know, we went out to bid for um, certain services at the airport, so this does fit under that contractual um, uh, document. But there is Mead and Hunt, who's done our air service development, is a is a supporter to JVation. There's a number of kind of skills and perspectives that go into creating this work, and they're all teaming up to help get us that information. Okay. Okay. Board okay with this? I wish it was a lower price tag, but it's the price of doing business here. You know, so I understand that. Thank you, Jim.
That was it for MOIs. Yep, that's right. it. We'll move on to uh, future agendas. Just a couple things to bring to your attention. Uh, you may notice that we've um, changed the September 10th agenda slightly to accommodate um, a workshop on the recreational marijuana um, rules that will be discussed at the September 11th uh, meeting also. And we've also extended um, the amount of time that we have available for prepping for the um, joint meeting uh, with City Council to include um, housing policy issues. As you may recall, when we had the housing summit, we agreed to have the uh, APSHA board uh, come in for a portion of our joint meetings to discuss common policy issues. So we'll have Tom come in under that. And we had talked about having uh, further discussion around the health board structure and, and such um, after our last Board of Health meeting. So we, we felt like we needed to put some more time in there. And then we're still hammering out um, the recommended agenda from the, the city side and, and our side. I think we probably have too many big topics now, so we're going to need to narrow that down. We'll be able to talk about that. So John, on the, uh, the housing policy issues, um, has Tom McCabe, would he have already gone before City Council to have some of these discussions or will get it but City Council won't have it? Well, the, the idea, the suggestion is that there be a briefing time um, so that both bodies are relatively up to speed on an issue so that when we come together we can actually make a policy decision. I do not know though, George, if that scheduling has happened that way. Yeah, because that would be the, the point of that, right? Yeah. Okay, thanks. And then, um, oh, I'm sorry, right, no, if I could just one yeah, more. Yeah. Um, September 11th, the um, recreational marijuana update, which was scheduled after the regular meeting, was not taken off your future agendas, but we'll get that taken off. Uh, okay. Rachel? Um, I was just going to give you a future date um, that the next QQ meeting is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, November 14th. So it's not in our regular. They try to always stay out of our regular meeting schedules, but I know sometimes you schedule yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wanted to get it out there way in right. advance so it wouldn't be uh, one I'd have to miss because I'm already gone that day. That's good during budget time. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Anybody else have anything on future agendas? Okay, we've got about five minutes here. We could, we probably don't have time for board reports today, but if there's anything for open discussion, we just have a few minutes at least for someone wants to introduce a topic for next time. I could just do, if you don't mind, a, a quick update. The board may have seen on Friday there was an article in the paper about the Valley Health Alliance. It was um, maybe out a little bit ahead of the alliance actually having a, a discussion about how we were moving forward. Um, but just um, to bring the board up to speed in a very nutshell version, um, the, the Alliance right now is vetting a proposal um, to bring together a number of services that we've determined would help manage health care costs. Um, and, and that includes um, pulling together services around um, wellness, care navigation, um, mental health services for employees. There's a, a whole number of things that, that are coming together and we're vetting a proposal. The exciting news is that um, the Mayo Clinic has become interested in, in what we're doing and has offered to provide assistance and, and tools wow. in building um, our model. They've been uh, apparently looking for an opportunity where there's an employer initiated effort. Um, to manage health care costs and work with the medical community and we fit that bill and so um, we will be pursuing a, a partnership with the um, Mayo Clinic. Right now we have targeted a timeline um, to develop and, and have these services operational um, by mid-year next year. So we're, we're looking to have um, basically a what we're calling a wellness hub um, uh, put together and, and the business plan vetted and ramped up um, by May of next year which fits well with some of the partners 
uh, fiscal years, which run uh, June to July. Um, not ours, so it'll cause us to do a, a little bit of uh, gymnastics with our, our plans and such, but we're working on that. So just to let you know, uh, what was in the paper is actually true. We are now um, vetting a, a real proposal and working on it. We've charted out a path uh, to follow. We believe that path um, will fit well uh, within our um, budget in the future. We may budget a, a few dollars out of our health, um, health insurance fund balance to, to initiate the programs. Um, and it does look like we'll have Mayo Clinic as a partner to test and vet, which is, um, I think, adds a lot of credibility to the process. So, just to give you a quick update on that. Good work. Very good work. Anybody else have anything for a few minutes, or at least to introduce topic that's needed for next time, Steve? I wanted to, oh, not about uh, future topics on this, but um, I wanted to ask Rachel about the Club 20 meeting coming up is the next this coming Saturday right yeah it's what's a, what is on the agenda there would be would it be worth um, well, my the, time to go to part of it yeah the Friday meeting is always the business meeting of adopting resolutions and so that's primarily the quote board of directors um, Friday I think they are really focusing uh, excuse me the Saturday meeting um, the seventh is they're really focusing heavily on uh, health care some of the results from the health the club 20 foundations work on health care accessibility in the west slope and just you know how to get involved what it is what it's not things like that so they're kind of really focusing on that um, and I would note I, I know they've invited um, Marty from the Valley Health Alliance but she has not been able to um, accommodate Connect. the time. Yeah, yeah. they to haven't be been able to find the time, speaker. so she, they won't be presenting yeah. there. So, you know, it's it's fifty fifty. Their their Saturdays generally are very good with a lot of good sessions. They usually have a few legislative updates to the extent they can get you know Congress people or senators to phone in or or uh, come in by video. Um, but I don't have the full agenda with me right now. Okay. Um, well, yeah. I was thinking of. Uh, possibly going for the Saturday and then the land dance starts at 530 in Carbondale <laughs> so uh, it weighing, is a challenge well you're going to be there next weekend that. with the River District so yeah your call okay with that uh, I think we'll adjourn for the day thank you Grassroots okay